morning, good evening, good night. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm hoping these little videos will be helpful for you in reviewing just some everyday things that we see and emerge and on the floor. Today, we're just gonna do a quick review on croup and on asthma. Croup is obviously known for its barky cough, its strider, and some respiratory distress. In our case here, croup, we're gonna manage it in our eMERGE department and either discharge home or consider admission to Thunder Bay. So on their first assessment, you need to decide if they're mild croup, moderate croup, or severe croup, and let the doctors know. If they are mild, they have a occasional cough, barky cough, a minimal strider, uh, no respiratory distress, and no lethargy or agitation. If they are in, in a moderate case of croup, they are having frequent coughing, they have strider at rest, uh, and have respiratory distress seen as in drying. They have limited lethargy or agitation, pretty much at their baseline in that way. And if it's a severe case of croup, they are having frequent coughing, prominent strider heard as soon as you walk in the room or as soon as you see that child, if severe in drying and substantial lethargy or agitation. To treat these kids, we're either going to give 0.6 milligrams per kilogram of dexamethasone. In our current situation, we only have the IV, uh, the IV supply of dexamethasone. Again, draw up the dose. You can mix it with water, juice, whatever, milk, whatever the child that you have in your in the emerge will take. But it's only a dexamethasone in this case is a one-time dose and that is all they get. If they, if they continue to get worse or they represent, then we can con continue and give them epinephrine. We have epi inhalers, also called primatine. It is in med dispense in eMERGE only. This can be given, is to be given five puffs without an arrow chamber. We don't carry arrow chambers. If your child you have doesn't tolerate just putting it in their mouth, you can use, uh, as per RCCR, a, one of our paper cups. You'll take scissors, cut a hole big enough for your inhaler, and put it in the end. This will fit over mouth and nose for your children. You can also do that for other inhalers as well. If the doctor would like you to give epinephrine nebulizer, this is the one you're looking for. It's one milligram per mil. Look at your medical directive, take your epinephrine, pour it into your pediatric nebulizer. Make sure you follow the directions. Some of the uh, epis for little ones, under one, you're going to dilute. For over one, you don't dilute. So just take a look at that medical directive. This will screw on here. At this point, you can use it with the mask. It's hooked up to your oxygen. You can use it with your mask. If the kid isn't tolerating the mask, you can take that off and have mom or dad just hold it as close as they can to child's face, mouth. Uh, make sure mom or dad is wearing their regular mask. In your best choice is to keep, put your child, put this child in negative pressure if you're using the nebulizer. Negative pressure in eMERGE is in the trauma room. If trauma room is full, uh, you can then put them on a stretcher or into the cast room. Better choice, if you don't have negative pressure, is into the cast room. It's a private room, a COVID room. Uh, put them in there. If the COVID room is, is being used, put them on a stretcher, put the curtain all the way around. Make sure you, you are wearing your N95 and mom or dad are wearing their mask. So they're having their epi. If they have a good response from the epi, you are going to then monitor them for three to four hours. If they're still improved at that three to four hour mark, they will most likely be discharged home. If there's no improvement, there would be further treatment and potential admission to the hospital. That is croup. And just a quick review of asthma. Asthma is wheezing. We have a pediatric severe asthma algorithm known as PRAM. Things you need to assess on an asthmatics presentation. Are, are they in drawing? If, they are, if there is no indrawing, their score on this is zero. If they are, it's a two. If they are having retractions, they are also scored a two. 
if there are none, there are zero. If there's wheezing, there are zero if they're absent, a one if they're on expiration only, a two if they're inspiration and expiration, and or expiration, and a three if they're audible wheeze, they have silent chest and minimal air entry. Obviously a three is awful. Then you're gonna assess for air entry. Is it normal? There are zero. Is it decreased at bases? There are one. Is it widespread decreased? There are two. Is it absent or minimal? There are three. And then assess their oxygen saturation. Is it greater than 94%? They would score a zero. If it's 92 to 94%, they would score a one. And if it's less than 92, they would score a two. If a PRAM score is four to six, you're gonna to continue to treat with, cell, with Ventolin every 30 to 60 minutes as needed and monitor closely. If they're greater than an eight, you're going to continue that uh, Ventolin. You might have to consider IV access and you might need to look to the doctor to administer steroids, mag sulfate, uh, potentially an IM epinephrine and maybe a chest x-ray. Uh, again, we do have nebulizers, nebulized uh, atrovent and Ventolin if needed. Do try to convince your doctor to let you use puffers instead. We do have those, and there is a conversion on the medical directive and merge. And I think that's it for my asthma and croup. I will, I don't think I did say, I will be putting on the resources for these algorithms on the Emerge computer. It is under the label TREK. T-R-E-K-K, -K, Translating Emergency Knowledge for Kids. It is a really great resource. Please go on and use it for any pediatric illness uh, or issue in Emerge. It will give you exactly what to expect and what is expected of you. I think that's great. Have a great shift and I will see you real soon.